was there some place in New Hampshire where they cut the school budget in half? Because there were some D.C. libertarians going berserk about what an extreme move that was and you shouldn't do that. So what's the story? So the story is the little town that could. So the town of Croydon, New Hampshire, it's up in the, it's near Dartmouth actually in Hanover. So sort of the upper valley region of New Hampshire. And it's a small town. It has about 800, I believe, registered voters. It probably is majority free stater populated at this stage. So lots of free staters move there. That's where Barter Farm is, if you've heard that name before. So the story of Croydon has been coming for many years. There have been lawsuits. Um, you know, we've had free staters serving on the school board. They work to introduce school choice to get the kids out of the, uh, the school, actually. They literally, Tom, have a one room schoolhouse, an old little brick schoolhouse, and they only go up to grade four or six or something, and then the kids, kids get transferred to another district. So they've been sued by the Department of Education and prevailed. Um, you know, it's, it really is this little town that's sort of a microcosm, I guess, of some of the things we're trying to accomplish. So by way of backstory, in 2020, they officially defunded the police, by which they closed their one man police guy. They just said, look, we don't need a police officer here. We have incredibly low crime. If we need anything, we'll be in this little contract with the state troopers office. So we are shutting down your role. This poor guy got so upset because they said it was effective immediately at the selectmen's meeting that he stripped down to his skivvies and marched out of the meeting. His, it was in a blizzard in the middle of the winter and the, his wife actually picked him up on the side of the highway. And everyone was like, okay, that's not quite what we meant, you know, with immediately. Um, so that's sort of the flavor of the town. So this last, uh, so the way in New Hampshire it works is cities have bigger elections, but a lot of the small towns just have like a town day. They meet on a Saturday and they go over literally the entire budget line by line. They vote on everything they need for the town. So it was at the, the normal town meeting and um, Ian Underwood, who is actually the husband of one of the women who serves on the school board. And I guess she only knew the day before that he was gonna do this. And she was not actually even on board. But he just got up and it was all um, legally done according to town rules and according to all the rules. And he, he said, look, I think we should, um, we should cut the budget by, um, and I don't even think it was by half. I think what he said is we will allocate $10,000 per student. Now to put that number in context, you can send your kids to a Montessori or a private school in New Hampshire for under $10,000. So $10,000 is actually an extremely reasonable amount to allocate to, to the budget. And, um, and his argument or the way he framed it, I thought was very interesting. He said that the way they talk about budgets is they say it's a budget, but really what it is is a ransom. Because when you and I set up a budget, we say we have X amount of money to spend. How are we going to figure out to, how to spend it, right? So you're actually on a budget. But what the, the town does is they just go, oh, we're just going to add 10%. We're just going to add 10%. We're just going to add 10%. And they had actually increased the town school budget by 30% over three years. And clearly that's unsustainable. So he got up. He made the motion. It was, you know, it's a town meeting. There are not that many people. I think the final vote was 20 to 14. Um, you know, the school board actually abstained, Jody abstained, um, you know, people who felt like they were too close. So I think even though it was a small amount of people, it was done cleanly, legally, whether people like it or not. Now it's interesting because you know, people try and say that free staters are monoliths. They're not. Um, one of the women who used to serve on the board with Jody, who is a, a pre-stater, I guess, you know, she's very upset with what just happened because she still has kids in the school. So now she's petitioning and they're going to bring something back. So it's basically small town drama 
but it's also indicative of what can be done on a local level if people have the appetite. And we have to remember in a town like Croydon, yes, there are 80 students and they all get $10,000. That's still almost a million bucks, right? That's $800,000. But what about the 800 voters who are all getting property tax relief? Because all of them, if you cut a school budget in half, you're probably saving, I don't know, between like 300 and 1,000 bucks a year on your property taxes, which given where we are economically is a compelling reason. And maybe that's the way we start to motivate people to really understand, hey, this is not just, I mean, it's fine if we wanna spend the money on the kids, but at a minimum, can they read and write when they're done, please? Um, so I think it's just all of these issues finally coming to a head. And because there's so many of us who are early pioneers, you know, we're here, we're locals. I've been here for 13 years now, 14 years. I mean, it's my home. And so you're just like, hey, what do I want out of this? And in Croydon, that's what they wanted and that's what they did. And I think it's gonna be an interesting story.